Greetings, every people. Zero Cult Personality here, Tune Critics. And I am tuned to the name of my game. Welcome back to the Sketchpad, a little show where I send out a bunch of emails to say, hey, you want to be interviewed? And whoever gets back to me first is a uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, I guess. So, I have with me a pretty, pretty chill dude today. Another, another swell YouTuber. Uh, you probably have heard of him. I don't know, some, some guy named uh, Rabid Luigi or something. I, I hear, I hear he's pretty popular. Uh, hello, I'm feeling very chill. Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Very glad to be here. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? How was your weekend, sir? M my weekend was lovely. I got an awful lot done. It's really warm here today, as it is today and over the weekend. So I had to shut some windows and some doors so I can isolate the sound of my voice. It doesn't carry across the world, and I am kind of melting. But other than that, doing pretty well. Hmm. So for those of you who do not know who you are, sir, what is it you do, and why? Uh, I make videos on YouTube, mainly about video games. I have a, a, a countdown, a top five, top ten kind of thing every Sunday. I also, as like a, not an afterthought, but a little something I keep going during the week, I play I play video games, a Let's Play type format. Although that, that we may get into later, I don't know. That is uh, not going to be lasting for too much longer in its current format. But mostly video games, almost entirely video games, and trying to... Uh, bring some kind of an analysis, analytical viewpoint of video games. With a, with a dash of comedy, I like to think. I'm not sure. It's all subjective. Yeah, all subjective, I think. When it comes to, like, top ten, top five, top seven videos, like, it's all about seven. your opinion, but you're always going to have people, like, just arguing up a storm over it. Yeah, I, I think when you when you get into... When, when you put your opinion out in a video format on the internet, you have to accept that quite early on, people... Well, other than the fact you're not going to please everybody, people are just going to argue with you because they would like to argue with you. And, of course, because they may have a differing opinion, but I think it's, it's easier to enjoy what you're doing if you accept that, you know, you're not necessarily right in the eyes of everybody, effectively. Yeah. How yeah. long have you been doing videos, if I may ask? Because I know quite a lot of people uh, back in the day, because I used to do this, uh, when Screw Attack was still doing, like, regular top tens, I noticed, mm. um, I actually watched a few of your videos back then as well. Ha! <laughs> back in the day. Uh, well, I've, I've been doing videos in this current format since 2011, I think. I actually made the channel in 2010, but it was back in the 2010. Didn't really do anything until, like, halfway through 2011. Uh, I did briefly, I can't remember what I made, but I, I did use YouTube for something, I'll have to look this up later, uh, in, like, 2007 or something. That was an age ago, but wow. I did like a project with friends or something like we made a video and i can't remember what it is and if if, if one of them is listening i'm very sorry but our time together <laughs> didn't mean that much apparently i'm sorry but I've, I've been around for a while doing various things and i like to think i've improved over that time well that's good so looking back on like your past videos what was the moment in your video making career where you knew like yeah i made it i know what i want to do like this is what i want to do I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think overall, as a as a sign that hey, I could do something with this. It was getting a million views on a video. So it's, like, it's kind of like a bragging thing, but it's it's no, very it slow thing. progress. It is a big thing. It's it's a crazy thing because that number is too big to really process. But it's it's being able to have that number and think okay. We're not sort of fiddling around with, with small numbers and, oh, look, I got 100 views. I remember being delirious, like absolutely delirious when I think I made a video about Easter eggs and it got 10,000 views in a week. And it blew my mind. It was like, how are there that many people who care about this kind of thing? And getting to the million on a video was like, OK, it's, it's serious proper time now. And then I, you know, uh, with full screen and Maker Studios and with Ritual now making money off of these and then suddenly thinking, this is pretty serious money coming in. So I think there was a moment where in my previous job, having been there for a year and progress of videos was slowing down, I was noticing paychecks and YouTube was going up. This the, the, what I, the other job I had was like, you know, answering phone calls effectively. It wasn't very intellectually stimulating, but the, the uh, salary for that was remaining static. YouTube was going up and there was a point where I was earning more than more through YouTube than what I was was with this other job and I thought I have to travel I have a really bad schedule and everything so if I gave that up I would do YouTube full-time and that in a way was a moment where I thought okay serious time I can do something kind of crazy with this 
Yeah, it's interesting because not a lot of people think like YouTube is like a real job or anything. Or people kind of just look down and like, oh, really? Like, how much are you getting paid? But it, it's it, it's it's. Excuse me. It's interesting because <laughs> YouTube does pay a lot, and if you balance that out with like other means of like getting money and stuff, you can actually go full time with it and make a decent living off of it. I, I think YouTube pays a lot if you live within your means, and if you understand that YouTube, as a way, as a as a method of income, is variable and unpredictable, and you're never going to have two months that are the same. Unless, well, if you go on some massive snowball of popularity and channel growth, you are going to experience something where, oh my god, how much money did I make? But it's it's <laughs> kind of just, you have to keep it, you have to keep your feet on the ground and understand that, yes, you are working for yourself. That also means that you are 100% responsible for your income and your livelihood. And if you don't make a video, if you say, no, nah, I, won't, I won't bother, I'll just, I'll chill and play a different game and I won't make a video towards that, that is gonna seriously hamper your income and your ability to feed yourself and clothe yourself. So if you look at it that way, it's terrifying, but it's also a job which is, I don't really see it as a job. It's a job which is ungodly enjoyable. It is so incredibly enjoyable and as long as you focus on that then you kind of start to forget about the variable income and worry about oh no i won't have enough money to eat my food this week it's like you know you work around it you got to save it don't don't spend it all at once it's like ah uh, do i make another minecraft video just so i can get dinner mm. this week or do i <laughs> it's the eternal dilemma you know did you go with what, what's popular and just have this avalanche of money but is that sustainable it's 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 a lot to think about yeah, it is, because you look at people who want to see, like, all the popular stuff, but when you do your own stuff, they're kind of just like, eh, no, we want to see the popular stuff, and that kind of, mm. that that's kind of like a jab, like, right yeah, at you, need it's to, just like, really? Yeah, it, you need to find a balance, and that's not always possible. Let's see, oh, uh, now that I, now that I know how long you've been doing this, it sounds like it's almost been, like, ten plus years. Hey. Well, not, not the video games, but making you, videos in some way, uh... Yeah, let's go 10 plus years. Okay. By your personal preference, what are some qualities you think a content creator should have? I would say uh, a good work ethic. Hey, yeah, let's try that again. A good work ethic, slightly hard word to say. I'd say a schedule. It's not really a quality, but a thing to have which helps you create videos in a reliable way. Going sort of more, more into it, respect for the viewer is very valuable because they can make or break you they often you'll notice when they break you because it's it's not a good feeling and i would say being humble and you know not necessarily leaping down the throat of a trend is is also quite a, i've seen i see that an awful lot and i'm not saying that's a bad thing it's just something i'd like to do because i the way i make my videos is i think a lot about i'm not saying they don't think a lot about what they make but i i dwell a lot on a video before I make it in a way I, I dwell on a topic I think about something like a couple of weeks in in advance of before making it so a trend is like okay Overwatch has come out it's a really good game let's throw a video out it's like no you're gonna take it take it slowly get to it eventually get some kind of informed opinion on it and then make the video so kind of in a in a horrible way I'm saying restraint I think I am but in a in a in a way that helps you rather than slows your progress down i guess i mean sometimes leaping on a trend is a good thing but not immediately so give it time to fester and think about what that trend means to you if you like overwatch or undertale was another one or pokemon go was another one and then do something about it effectively yeah, you don't want to, like, just jump on and there's, and put, like, oh, yeah, here's the top ten, like, sexiest Overwatch characters or something. And then yeah. watches that just, like, either goes spiraling down or you get a lot of views and you feel really dirty afterwards after doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's getting lots of views for something which doesn't necessarily represent your content as well. So, like, all, all these, it's like stuff on Twitter where you make a, a viral tweet on Twitter. It's like, this isn't actually what I'd spend m most of my time doing. So if you're here for that, I may have to disappoint you. Yeah. What has been the most fun project for you to, yeah. uh, to work on? I would say overall the projects, I, I really like the collaborations because I like working with people who are like-minded and enjoy their work as much as I do, often more than I I do, um, but, but also I really like the April Fool's videos. Oh, I really yeah. like the April Fool's videos because quite a lot 
the way I make my videos, I kind of restrict myself. No one's no one's restricting me. I do it to myself, so I'm I make sure that I'm talking about something in a, in an educated way. I like to think maybe I spend a long time. I read a lot of Wikipedia articles, but it's just, that's we'll get back to that. But hey, you April Fools. When I when I make an April Fools video, I just say let's have a, you got to do your research. April Fools is just. Like, let's break every barrier down. Let's let's just do ridiculous things. Like the last one I did was a, a massive parody on the things I hate about YouTube. So it was it was an angry video that kind of got across feelings that I could like I could talk about elsewhere. But why not make a whole whole video about it? Right, overreact to things and you know make really unfunny jokes and be outrageous and loud. It's like this is this is good. I it's it's very cleansing. It's very therapeutic in a way. So. April Fool's videos, generally. Yeah, there's a certain art to them, too. When you look at April Fool's videos, you kind of have to look at them and be like, okay, are they going to be expecting this, or can I really swerve them? Because so many people get prepared now for, like, April Fool's videos. Well, there's a there's a wonderful uh, sort of expectations of this reality game you can play with the audience, and this is something I try and do. Like, I'm trying to think back. The, I, I made a an April Fool's video like two years ago, which was top 10 Easter eggs. And I just talked about actual physical chocolate Easter eggs. It's te I wasn't I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying, but they were expecting that. And then I did a video uh, based on a running joke, which is I sort of demonstrate that if, he, if people would like to recommend a topic, they can type it in the comments. And then on screen, it's me typing about butts, like top five butts in video games yeah so i actually made that video for april fools and it was a serious video about a really dumb topic and then you do a not so serious video about a serious topic and you sort of play around with different ideas and throw things in the air and invert ideas and you know facts and you just end up with a ridiculous a ridiculous video and that's how you should do it with all the videos that you've done what helps you make each countdown you do feel unique and not recycled I think that's very hard. It's it's the problem is I make them weekly, so in a way I have to get into some kind of schedule. What I really try and do, and it's something I'm not terrible at, but I, I like to think I could be better at, is ensuring that they don't feel the same one video to the next, and that you can fiddle with the format, you can put things out of order, you can talk about games which I never talk about, and I really I try so hard on this one, and it's it's sometimes difficult, it's sometimes a little tricky to have an idea like a list in your head will say okay we'll put a metal gear game at number two but then you think i always talk about metal gear i always talk about zelda i always talk about this kind of game so you have to sort of stop and think is there anything else that could go there could i swap something out is this a really good opportunity to talk about dark souls or lost odyssey or something like that you just got to really look around for different ways of changing up the formula and in a way i don't do that much to change up the formula because it is hard to uh, fiddle with it without really undermining the structure of the video in a way so it's what I try to do now is inject more bits of me in front of the camera doing slightly dumb things because at least then it breaks up the flow of the video in a beneficial way but it is it, it the problem is what I look at on YouTube with countdowns and top fives and tens and that sort of thing, when I look at the really big channels, and I'm not talking like uh, Peanut Butter Gamer or John Tron or, you know, like other people who do that kind of thing with a characterful outlook on it. I mean the people who pump out top ten outrageous moments in film, that sort of thing. We'll get to that later potentially. But that in a, that, that there, that is mass produced. And I'm not saying that's bad. It just, it feels, if you watch... Let's go there. Let's let's talk about Watch Mojo for a second. If All you right. watch a lot, if you if you watch a lot of Watch Mojo, they blend together. So if I do this occasionally, like if you watch like five of their videos back to back, they just sort of become the same video or the same experience. And that's not what I would like to do. But it is very successful. And that is another problem where if you make a lot of videos and you do them very frequently and to a tight schedule there is a tendency to make them the same every single time, and that is a that is a slippery slope to fall down, I'd say. Yeah, because you don't want your content to become just stale, the same thing, because everyone's just like, oh, if you've seen one Rabbit Luigi video, you've, you've seen them all, so it's not it, like you need to watch them anymore. It's the worst place to be, because they don't hate your content, they're just bored by it. 
Yeah, and I think it's it's worse to be bored than to just not watch it at all because then you're just like, well, why are you even watching then? Oh, because there's nothing better on, and that 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 really hurts. Apathy, apathy will kill you, and there's nothing you know. But if people dislike your opinion, that's one thing. If they think that you are too brash or loud, that's okay. You can tone that down. If they think you're boring, that's a bit harder to fix. Yeah. What game do you pop in to get motivation in between, say, editing and rendering? Ah, that's a very good question. What I what I tend to do is it depends on the system. So for PC, uh, I'm currently playing well. I'm currently playing Overwatch and Skyrim because I, I've got a brand new PC and I'm testing out games to see what I can run and what I can record in such a way where um, for a long time I've been using my laptop and that does a lot of things and it's very useful but it's a little bit it's a little bit slow it's a little bit behind the eight ball for technology so I've been playing some games for fun and also to see if I can record them and for have uh, to have the frame rate still be something kind of decent uh playing a lot of breath of the wild i'm actually playing it on my channel as a series but also it's the kind of game that since i'm right near the end of that game i haven't beaten it yet by the way just by the by but um well, it's a when long you're right game. it's a very long game <laughs> Give me, give me slack for that one. But when you, as I'm at the end, I do the serious stuff on camera. But then I also just like I grind materials and do some more exploring and find Korok seeds and that sort of thing in my own time. And it's a really fun game in your own time because it's so relaxed, it's casual. I was on a a, a four hour round trip train journey to Paris a couple of weeks ago, which is lovely, by the way. But uh, I spent basically the whole time playing Breath of the Wild, and that time went by in a flash because you lose yourself in that world and it's it's wonderful for that it's it's mechanically the few things like weapon durability which you can argue against and say oh it's not that good but it's very good as an immersive game because in a way that's actually quite good because you play it with almost absent thought which helps you kind of helps the ideas kind of fester in your head say oh that's an interesting mechanic let's see if any other games have done that maybe i can make a video about that maybe i can mention it in a video and that is what i look for in a casual game which i'm not going to play for you know wanting to put it in a video later or getting an opinion on that ahead of time or something so breath of the wild overwatch i'm not really playing anything on my ps4 like crash bandicoot but that's not a, really a casual game oh, I, I play that Yes, Dark no, Souls. I'm um, kidding, I'm kidding. I, I can't stand that either. Dark Souls Wrath of Cortex is a very difficult game, and I <laughs> don't necessarily play it to have a... Not, not an enjoyable time, but to have a relaxed time. I, I, I do that for something else. All right. You actually mentioned uh, Let's Playing before. I want to actually ask you, what are your thoughts on the, the quote-unquote Let's Player curse, where you play a game like on stream and you, you're terrible at it, but when you play it off stream, like, oh yeah, this is my best game. But suddenly when you're on stream, you're the worst at it. Like, what, do you, what are yeah. your thoughts on that? I would say generally it's just performance anxiety and uh, what, so a mild form of performance anxiety. Because if you seriously have that kind of anxiety, then you would maybe struggle to record something in a live format because, you know, you'd you trip over your words a lot. But it's sort of more specific stuff. And I guess just happenstance that you will you will fail on stuff which you would never have a problem with before. But what I find quite often is that I'm really good at stuff which I would never have a chance of doing outside of a recording format. So there's like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, but like mini games that in, in Zelda games that have provided problems to me in the past, I'm actually quite good when I've got a camera right in front of my face and a, not a camera, but a microphone right, right in front of my face. And I think it's just, you, you focus on stuff with which you've never died on or never failed before, and maybe slightly ignore the stuff which you're actually really good at when the camera's rolling and you're recording something. So I, I don't really find... The power of editing can fix anything. So you, you may die many times, but like, I just won't show them that. I'll show them the first time. And they'll think I'm amazing, but, you know, usually they'll catch on. It's just like, hey guys, here's my playthrough of, like, Stormy Ascent. Look at this, first time. Ignore the 350 tries that I failed. <laughs> this is the truth. This is the true take. <laughs> Welcome to my one life one life round of Battletoads, and you see odd jump cuts every time you die. It's like, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. There's just a game lag, and it's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. It's an old game. It's an old game. Do you have any ways to deal with stress while... Um... I guess that I guess the phrase on the job doesn't quite fit here, but do you have any ways to deal with stress like um, when it comes to I guess writer's block or when it comes to how you want to edit a video? I would say uh, video games generally are a very good 
pure for, for writer's block. If you if you play a casual game like Breath of the Wild, not necessarily Overwatch, that's a bit hectic, but anything where you maybe have played it before is, actually, is quite an interesting idea, and you can just let your mind wander and think about things you might be struggling with and allow yourself the chance to sort of reword that in your head as you go. I also do a lot of running, sort of casually sort of running around where I live, and that is something where I've got music in the background, and ah. it's, there's... There's no thought at all because you're just running forward, you know, just, you know go, go around a loop or something, and then that is a good that, that's a good time to let ideas fester. Stress is again something which can be helped by exercise in a way, and just running around, and probably not playing Crash Bandicoot. But mm-hmm. I, I think I think stress generally, or reading a comment which you don't like in in YouTube, just you've just got to step away because you fester on it too much you you think about it too much and you start doubting yourself and doubting what you're doing and i've i've done that i've i've read a youtube comment as a as a common not fallacy but uh um not really not even a myth but you can read a thousand positive comments so many people telling you how amazing you are they love the video you read one comment which points out something bad or tells you that you're terrible that comment will burrow so deeply into your subconsciousness and just live there and and just have a wonderful time there so it's it's not necessarily don't read the comments because they say some wonderful things but when you read that comment the one which says something which you've been doubting for a very long time saying oh you know your style of comedy is terrible you think oh god it is isn't it oh no they i've been found out effectively you don't want to think about it too much it's it's very hard not to if you, you feel like you should you feel like you should just uh, not justify but grace that response with i will spend some time to think about it thank you for your commentary i shall <laughs> shall see what i can do about it for the next video but if it's genuinely something which feels hurtful to receive just go do something else find anything to do and it will go away so yeah because i see so many so many different um content creators and even some of my friends like they'll be have they'll they'll have like a slew like a constant stream of like good comments but they'll focus on the like one or two negative comments they get and yes that, that baffles me sometimes because like it's like it's only one or two like minor issues like i know some people are like perfectionists and whatnot but when it comes to those sort of comments yeah you kind of just kind of have to just brush them off a little bit because it's it's not a good idea to completely ignore the bad comments, but you can't let those bad comments like get in your head. No. It's, it's like what I said earlier. You're never, ever in the history of humanity till the day we die at the heat death of the universe, you will never please everyone. Aim for a medium where you're pleasing the people. You're pleasing people to the tune of which you would like to do. If you're making content and talking about things or make, playing a game and doing so in a, in a, matter which, in a manner which is enjoyable, then... If it's a kind of content you enjoy and you're going about it in the in the way which you respect, then don't necessarily worry too much about people saying, "Oh, this is terrible," because they might just be looking for attention. That seems fair. Yeah, yeah I have to actually ask: uh, How many conventions have you been to? I have not been to many. I'm I'm not I'm not saying I'm a sociopath. You know, I I, I get out. I I do my I do my due diligence, but sort of where I live, I live in the middle of kind of nowhere. I can't drive. I keep failing the driving test because. I, they don't like me, I don't think. But um, I've, I've been to uh, MCM in London. I recently went to uh, Comic, not Comic Con. That's that's in that's somewhere else. Uh, Momocon in in Atlanta, which was my first trip to America. A lovely country. First flight was a transatlantic flight. It was eight hours, and I Ooh. played my I played my Switch not quite the whole way because it didn't have that much battery, and I didn't charge up my my external battery pack that time, but. Uh, you know, I, I spent a long time sort of. I should wrote half a video on that on <laughs> on the on that trip, which is again. I I would recommend if you do any kind of scripted content, um, content content even if you do any scripted content and you're going anywhere or going on a long trip or go, getting on a plane, take a a tablet, take a, a pen and paper if it's that, and just think of things. Just think of ideas, or if you have a, a basis for a video, jot down like bullet points and you will get it done but I've, I've, i haven't been to that many conventions but what i would like to do in the fullness of time it's something that uh may have more of a substantial uh framework to it sometime next week because i'm actually going into london to do something about it i'm trying to move to canada because all of the conventions i'd like to go to and i am actually going to uh what's it gamescom in germany in a, in, uh, before the end of the month but all the conventions i'd like to it's a wonderful place all the conventions i'd like to go to 
uh, are in America or Canada or in that part of the world. And there's a lot of I have a lot of friends out there. I have a lot of contacts out there. And like 80 percent of my fan base is either American or, Ca or Canadian. So I feel like I should go out there. And if I'm out there, I better go to every convention known to man. So that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm doing next Thursday. So this is I, I don't know when we're. I don't want to give away when we're recording this, but soon I'm going into London to talk to Canadian Immigration as an interview, and they're going to let me know how my application's gone. I applied in January, and they've only just come back to me, so, you know, little steps. Did you say that you've been to, like, an American convention before? Yes, I, I went to Atlanta. It was, it was Momocon. How was that? How was your, your first American convention experience like? Because I always like to ask that to, like, people who come overseas. It was it was really enjoyable. It's a... It's a wonderful country you've got some really nice food and some wonderful accents uh the, everyone everyone was very welcoming uh I, I met up with so many people who i've talked to on skype or on twitter or on youtube and made friends that way but actually meeting them in real life being able to touch their flesh in a not creepy way is actually genuinely i hope eye-opening and what i found and i didn't really have that when i went to mcm because uh i hadn't put my face in many videos at that point but when i went to momocon like end of may this year i was i was approached by more people than i thought i'd be i didn't have a panel i didn't i didn't go there with a presence as i'm gonna be there you come watch me but people knew who i was and that's you. terrifying they recognized me and they, they came up and wanted to shake my hand and that's a little terrifying because <laughs> it, it's 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 talking to somebody but they know a lot more about you than you know about them so i i shake their hand and say hello <laughs> yeah, enjoying the convention. I'm not saying I'm I'm that nervous meeting new people, but I'm a little nervous meeting somebody who really knows quite a bit about me. Like, what do they? What is their view of me? It's 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 don't care too much about what people think of you, but I have to in order to be polite. I have to kind of care what they think about me because they seem to like me. So I need to, you know, be polite and uphold a reputation of hey, this guy's kind of chill. So, you know, <laughs> I probably need to do that. You've probably met like uh, all sorts of different uh, content creators, probably when you were at that con and many other cons. I actually want to talk mm -hmm. about someone you've probably worked with quite a lot. Uh, I think you've done a few project with uh, projects. A few projects with some dude, uh, what's his name, uh, Josh Scorcher, I think. Good, good guy, good guy. Yeah, how did, how did that first come about, where, uh, you two working together? I can't remember where the first one came from, but uh, back in the day when I was sort of finding my feet in this industry don't call it an industry that sounds terrible but yeah, in this in this field <laughs> i had industry sounds strange we're not we're not quite there yet. come back in like 10 years then then we'll get there um i was i was sort of looking at i had idols i had people who i aspired to be and really got me into this, this idea of hey you can make you can put opinions in videos about video games and people will actually watch that that's crazy and it was josh scorcher was one of them uh there was um the artark of flame peanut 3423 who now goes by alex Rochon. he's a now a voice actor and i think yeah i think he does some other things as well um and there's another guy called um actual name is francisco Mon and he went by Media Master uh, 127 or 127 or something like that. And these were all people who made content which inspired me to... I wanted to make that kind of content. I wanted to say that... I wanted to make a video like that and put my name next to it and say, hey, I made this. I'm kind of proud of that. And for a very long time, and this is a bizarre feeling, you, I don't think you ever... Maybe in like sport, maybe, but you very rarely get this in any other in any other part of life where you look to, look up to somebody, and then there's a moment where they see you as an equal, and that is very strange because they then say, "Oh, do you want?" It's very flattering. It's it's bizarre and wonderful and like not quite the peak of where you want to be because I'm at a different stage now where I have not necessarily new idols but new aspirations for people I'd like to work with, but because uh, I haven't worked with them before, basically. But being in, the, being in that position where suddenly that person who you aspire to be like wants to say, says to you, do you want to make a video? The, the obvious answer is yes, but it's, it's being able to do it and talk to them in a way where you, you're just not a, not, not a gibbering wreck in a Skype call. Saying, I'm just like, oh, this is this person, I like them. So <laughs> J Josh, I think, I, I can't remember which happened first. I... I think I, I worked with Josh and I worked with Alex later. I still have one, one with Francis. He's a cool guy. Met him in, uh, in America. But Josh is, Josh is wonderful to work with because he goes into a lot of detail of his scripting. And he will, like, we had, uh, quite recently we did one on 
uh, influential video games on his channel. And it was wonderful because we'd have a, uh, a Google Docs script open and we'd just have a Skype call for like two hours and we'd work out the script. And I had I had food and it was really casual. And so was, he's got really good work ethic, work ethic. I've said that before, but he works hard. He is quite a funny guy. He is He, he knows what he's doing and he can make some make some really good videos. So Josh, if you're uh, if you're watching this, uh, you know this this guy over here thinks you're a pretty cool dude. So I'll have to I'll have to link it to him now because I've talked about him. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned idols and aspirations. So what's what's one content creator you would love to work alongside? Like if you if I could give you a golden ticket to work with <laughs> like, one particular person, who would you want to go with? Well, it, it's strange. I, I, there's a lot of people I'd like to work with, but I feel like I'd need to get to a level where I can be happy that I. I'm working with these people at my current output of content and creativity and quality of content, that sort of thing. So if the golden ticket would be um, Normal Boots and Hidden Block, basically any of those. I love all of them. They're, they're wonderful talents. Like some, some call me Johnny, Brain Scratch Coms, those kind of people. So anything like that. But I would also say that I would need to be in like a frame of mind and a, 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 a an understanding that my content is where I'd like it to be to say that I deserve to work with those people, for lack of a better word. Because if, like, if, for example, if I was, you know, take it back a couple of years and I was, oh, I got a thousand subscribers, let's work with John Tron or something like that. It's like, I mean, yeah, that'd be wonderful, but I feel like I'd be letting the side down in a way. I wouldn't be pulling my weight as much. So I feel like, you know, the golden ticket is those, is that group of people, but I feel like I would need to get to that level to, deserve it it's it's not it's it's not very flattering word but in order to feel like i'm not i'm 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 pulling my weight i'm holding up my end of the bargain in this collaboration yeah it's funny actually because i remember when i put up the uh the the, uh, kadikaris interview and he mentioned your name and you put down the comment like that and now you're talking like you want to work with them just like "Hmm." yes this is a it's a matchmaking interview isn't it that's (laughs) nice but i mean i I, I met him in January. We, we were both invited to the Switch premiere, which was hilarious and wonderful, and came about. They they, they got my naming wrong on the tag oh. on the on the on the on the press pass. I went with my sister, uh, and they put Jenny Allen, which is my sister's name, and then underneath it, Rabid Luigi, on one press pass. And then I had a random stock press pass because they 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 as I booked, you know, I'd like to bring my sister as a plus one. They somehow combined the names and assumed that she was Rabbit Luigi, which was very strange. So it was it, it's it's an odd circumstance, but I did get a chance to meet um, Caddy there, and he's a he's a funny guy. And we played what did we play together? We played one two switch a lot together. So um, if we if Caddy's watching, Caddy, are you watching? I'd like to make a video of you, man. Let's do it. Oh boy! If that if this actually happens because of the, these two videos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel so weird because if that actually happens, I'd be like, oh, I made a thing happen with these. You feel, you feel like a third wheel in this relationship. Am I like sort of a cupid with arrows? That's like that's fine. <laughs> oh well, that's happened like one or two times to me. Um, hey. I guess it's like because I got two serious questions to end this, but I just want to get the bonus one out of the way. I still love to this day when we were on uh, Josh's E3 stream and they were talking <laughs> about the Switch. They were talking about Rabbit Luigi. The oh freaking, my god! <laughs> the, the, the Mario I Rabbit have... game that still is one of the most hilarious moments I think I've ever had being on I one ha- of Josh's streams. Yeah, I have not looked. I've not looked back at that stream yet. I feel like I should. I've. I've kind of. It's very bizarre. I was. I was. I wasn't told about it, but I was hinted at the existence of something to do with Nintendo and Ubisoft that I might be interested in by someone I can't name, but they, they uh, uh, DM'd me on Twitter saying, oh, your name's Rabbit Luigi, you might want to be interested in something which is coming soon, and, uh, you know, that's it's a little concerning when someone says that to you, but then there was the leak. The leak was bizarre, because there was actually me. There was actually a Rabbit Luigi, <laughs> and then... That's that's wacky. That's a little strange. Then E3 comes up and they actually call it Rabbit Luigi, and that was just the end of me because I I you know that's basically the peak. I can't improve on that. I'm not going to get another thing like that. Ubisoft. I think this is the, this is a, actually a really weird, funny, bizarre story. Ubisoft got information from Nintendo because Nintendo liked me for some reason now, um, and they yeah, invited me to. Well, there you go. The, the, Ubisoft invited me to Paris to play Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And uh, it was it was, it was the four-hour trip on the train to Paris, basically. And 
when I got there, the contact I was talking to for a long time uh, with emails trying to sort out details, he effectively said that when they were looking around for content creators they'd like to invite to this event, they uh, somebody in their office said, have you seen this guy's name? It's like, it's called Rabbit Luigi. And it's like, what, did he, did he name it quite soon? No, he's been going for six years. We have to invite him. It'll be <laughs> funny. Not because they thought I would be like some kind of important influential figure to invite to this event no they enjoyed the fact that my name was rabid luigi and they've got a character called rabid luigi they thought it'd be funny ubisoft as it turns out have a sense of humor <laughs> clearly I, I that's that must have been awkward when like first realizing that and then hearing that kind of stuff out but i think in, I, in a I, way I, it's nothing else can top that i have not got over it i don't think i'll ever get over it i <laughs> i still haven't bought one of their figurines i'll have to buy like 20 so how will you feel if you if one of your fans or you end up buying a rabid Luigi amiibo figure then <laughs> like that? I that, I that's immortalized like forever. I've no I've I've no idea. I think what I might just do is I'll, I'll on the sofa for a video. I'll just put it down and just say there you go. He's funnier than I am. He is he is he's better. He's just just that's the joke. That's the joke. We can end the video there. It's me. <laughs> Just put the just put the amiibo. It's not an amiibo, but like put the figurine on the sofa. There you go. It's all you need. Just it's zoom all you in need. On that. Don't even yeah. have to do any editing. Just boom. Mm. So getting back on a more serious note, what keeps you going and motivates you to keep going as not just a gamer but also a content creator? I would say, as a content creator, gamer is just I want to beat video games. I want to have a, sa a moment of satisfaction where I can beat something like Dark Souls or Crash Bandicoot or you know the same game, and be able to beat it at the end and then say, "Oh yeah, I beat that. It was hard. I died so many times, but I beat it. I overcome the adversity associated with that." With YouTube, and I, I, this this isn't going to sound wonderful, but I've always approached YouTube as I would like subscribe. Subscribers, not the money, not the views. I would like subscribers because a large audience gives you a large sample size for improving your own content. It's not so much that I want to be popular, I want to be famous, I want to improve, I want to be as good at this, not this. I'm, I'm, I'm interv being interviewed, but as good <laughs> at doing, doing the, making the content and talking about the video games and putting my opinion across in a video, I want to be as good at that as possible. And I feel like I've got a lot of places to go. I can I can be better. I can get my point across quicker and easier and more clearly. And it's just sort of constant strive to improve on every video. What I don't do, I think about a video a lot before making it, but as soon as it's out, I, I, I it's gone. It's dead to me, effectively, because... I just want to work on the next one. I want to make the next one. I want to improve. My cat's making noises. That's fine. I want, I want to improve in such a way that I never have to think about that next one or, or, the, or the previous one, rather, because like I, you know, videos I've made before, which have got these like million views from, you know, four years ago or something, I've forgotten about. I've, I've, I've cast aside because I don't need to remember them anymore because that was at a time where I was trying to make videos with maybe limited resources, maybe a, an older laptop, maybe with a, uh, a, a, a microphone that isn't as clear. And it, obviously you can buy things which may improve your video making, but you can also just look at a video without sort of dwelling on it too much and see that you can make improvements. And that is really what drives me forward, being able to constantly make these videos uh, without necessarily running out of topics. I'm doing kind of okay in that regard and just constantly find places to improve. And having a large fan base, in a way, is a very good way of getting back a lot of feedback. Not necessarily lots of good feedback, but you can, you can filter it through and find stuff which may be beneficial to you. Yeah, I think that's good, too. I, my motivation uh, when it comes to my content is kind of the same thing. I look back on some of my old stuff, and then I look at some of my new stuff and say, you know what, I've come pretty far. I've got much better resources. I have... Uh, much better editing skills, and I'm a lot more confident mm. in myself. So I would love to like redo all of my old stuff, and that kind of uh, that kind of motivates me to keep going with my own stuff as well. Yeah, I, I I look back at even even videos from say two years ago, one year ago, where like the lighting in the live action segments aren't that good, or the the uh, the emphasis I put on words isn't that good or like the gaps between words isn't that good. Like I'll I'll, I'll say something and then just pause for quite a long time and i don't really know why that's there if i you know, thinking about it years later i would never do that again because it's maybe, maybe for dramatic effect but in in generally talking about something there's like a i don't feel like there's a, there's a flow to my older videos and 
I that seems like something I can very easily improve by just knowing that that's a problem and seeing it as something which can be worked on in the future. Yeah, I think that's fair. And Simple. last question I want to ask, what is the best piece of advice you can give to any content creator? Ah, this is a good one. I've I've been thinking about this for a long time. I would say with the content and making making the YouTubes Making don't the YouTubes, yes. uh, making the YouTube. Don't approach it as something which you are going to make a career out of. It has to one one thousand percent. It has to be a hobby because otherwise you get into the wrong practices. You you approach it from the wrong angle. Uh, and I see a lot of channels. I'm not going to call anybody out, but channels which focus on rev <laughs> it's not your i've seen your channel your channel is working very well oh, um the the <laughs> the uh a lot of channels that prioritize revenue over making content which resonates with the viewer and i think that's important because you don't want to make content which people use if that makes any sense you want to use you want to build a, a fan base that react to your video that uh responds Bond to videos, not just people who watch it and say, I, I am satisfied with my viewing experience. I shall now go, now go to something else, which I, cons I shall consume wildly. It's just, you want to approach YouTube. This is going to sound incredibly cheesy. You want, to, you want to love YouTube. You want to love making YouTube videos. And that's really hard. Quite often, being in a situation where you can say, I really love YouTube. I love making YouTube. There's lots of aspects of YouTube which are quite incendiary i'd say like you know obviously the comments that don't particularly align with your way of thinking and copyright on youtube is an absolute minefield which never makes sense from one day to the next but you need to be in a position where you love what you're doing you love the fact that you're doing it and you love where it may take you not so much that i will i will start a youtube channel i will talk about these very trendy things and they will take me to 250,000 subscribers, I can then make money, I can then quit my job, and then I can make a living off of, off of playing YouTube video, and playing YouTube videos off of playing video games. And that's, you know, I'm sure that's a wonderful thing, but if you do it that way, you will, in a way, you're only setting yourself up for disappointment, because every time something doesn't go your way, or if you don't have the same, like, my subscriber growth is down by 10%, that will annoy you more than if you were to do it just for the fun of things, effectively. Yeah, you should do it for the fun of things because if you're not having fun with your work, then what's the point? If you're if you're Absolutely. if you're serious about what you want to do, then you won't just quit as easily. Because I've seen like a few people just like, oh, I'm not getting what I want. I'm done. Well, obviously, mm. you're not taking this as seriously as you want to. If you're not passionate about it, then what are you doing here? Yeah, I would say the enjoying what you're doing fact or bit of advice that that applies to every single profession out there you've got to be in you've got to be waking up every day thinking yes i'm doing this i am i'm in a good position that i'm doing this i'm going to enjoy my day today i'm going to make the most of the day if you're if you're waking up and you're thinking uh mm, maybe just five minutes longer that is that is maybe not the best place to be if it's like a stepping stone to somewhere if it's a stepping stone to somewhere else that's a different matter entirely but i wouldn't necessarily see you know You've got to you've got to approach YouTube from the from the aspect that it's fun, but not necessarily something that's immediately going to take off into a business because that is uh, it's it's kind of this is how I've seen it. It's hope versus expectations. I hope that YouTube can be successful. Don't expect it to be successful. Yeah, I think that's completely fair because yes. no one expects an overnight success. Absolutely. Okay. I think that about nicely wraps everything up. So before we go, is there anything you want to quickly plug before we head off? Uh, other than my YouTube, I, I make weekly videos. I have a Patreon where you can maybe help me out a little bit financially because YouTube is a YouTube's never predictable. We've been over this before, but <laughs> you know, just you, you'll probably find something in my videos that you'll like. Maybe not every single one of them, but I, I I talk about a wide variety of things. I I tend to focus on Nintendo stuff, but not out of I don't do it deliberately. It's just cool, just what I grew up with. So maybe you'll find something you like. Right. So, uh, definitely go subscribe to Reb Luigi over here. He's got some pretty swell content. I love his stuff. If you like top tens, then boy, you're in, you're in the right business with this guy. I, I make many of them. <laughs> it, it, wants to, it wants to leave! <laughs> it's fine. Wait, what, what would you like to ask about my cat? 
she's called Petra. She is about 10 or 11 and she's a calico. She's a uh, she's very dainty. She's been on the back of my sofa on a few videos and she wants to go out at the moment. So she's kind of rubbing up against my sh shoes at the moment. It's fine. It's fine. You you keep you keep you keep going. <laughs> Thank you. This is a lot of fun. Bye, guys.